What's up? Edge computing is really trendy. Let's talk about that. Okay, so Vercel just announced that their edge functions are generally available. And I think this is really exciting. I think edge computing on a whole is really exciting. To understand why I think that, let's talk a little bit about edge computing. But before we can talk about edge computing, we need to understand um, this cloud versus edge uh, dynamic that we have going on. Okay, uh, to understand that, we need to look at like the historical trend of cloud and edge. And really, I feel like it started with storage, cloud storage versus edge storage. And now we're in an age of cloud um, computing versus edge computing. And we'll talk in a little bit about where I think the future of this is. But for now, to understand cloud storage versus edge storage, let's look at a map. So this is a map that I may or may not have drawn. Uh, some called me the Bob Ross of the software. Well, anyway, um, and so we have the world and we have one region in a data center. Um, some would call that a cloud region, okay? I'm not sure if you missed the memo, but a cloud is really just some geographic location where servers live, owned by Google, usually, or Amazon, or um, Microsoft. And it's a geographic region, EU West, US East. And in these regions, there are servers which you rent from them. That is the cloud, okay? So for storage of like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, text files, um, you store it on their machines and they serve users across the world. So if it's cloud storage of like images, um, let's look at what that would look like. So we have this and um, let's say we're a user in Australia and we're represented by this pink color. So we're here in Australia and we want to request an image from the cloud. So we'll make a request all the way there and it'll come back. Um, that is one request to a cloud server for content. Um, that is going to be sometimes slow depending on how far you are from it because all of the internet travels at the speed of light across fiber optic cables, optic meaning light. Um, so the bigger the distance, the slower things are gonna be because light can only travel so fast across distances. So if you want faster stuff, you shorten that distance. Hence, edge, um, edge storage. So at edge storage, you actually store static files like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, text files, whatever, images, you store them at network edges. So if I'm sitting in Australia, there's an edge of where my network is that's geographically closer to me. You store stuff there, and when I want an image or something, I go to the edge, I get it, I come back, okay? Um, that's going to be faster. If we model that here, instead of going all the way to EU West, um, I would have like a smaller edge node kind of here in Australia. Um, and me as the user, I would, you know, I would just get my data from here. And maybe this, per this thing replicates into this once in a while or so on. But this is now edge storage. Cloud storage, edge storage. Edge storage is faster. Insects around me. Anyway, edge storage is faster. Then we move from storage to compute. Um, compute, of course, meaning not just storing static things, but running code on machines that you rent from people. So cloud compute means running code in someone's cloud, in US East, in EU West. Um, edge compute means running code at an edge. Uh, it's just harder to do edge computing because you, it's harder to distribute like beefy servers on which you can execute code um, unless that code is light and the machines themselves are light, right? So you can have many of them distributed a lot. You, it's, it's harder to distribute a bunch of like supercomputers versus distributing smaller, lighter run times. Um, this is the inherent challenge with edge computing. Thankfully, uh, Cloudflare with their workers runtime, I, I believe, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think they pioneered edge computing by creating this runtime for JavaScript that's kind of like Node.js but super light called the workers runtime. The workers runtime can execute code on Cloudflare's like 270 plus points of presence across the world because it's nice and light. So again, kind of like that diagram we drew, instead of um, going to, let's change the stroke color, but instead of going to like all the way across to EU West, coming back to execute code, we can now do compute here. Um, and that's awesome because it's way faster. What do I think is the future, the next step of cloud and edge? I think it's data. I think it's data. I think cloud data, where we have databases stored on some rented cluster somewhere, 
um, is the status quo, and I think edge data is the future, where it's data close to your users. Um, and I think that because this is the only scenario that I know where edge computing falls apart. Like this is a scenario where edge computing is worse than cloud computing. Uh, across the board, edge computing is way better than cloud because it's faster. Um, your people are gonna be happier and we know that milliseconds make millions. We'll talk about that at the end, uh, but it's, it's faster. So edge computing has a leg up except in the case of data. And to prove that to you, I've, I've created a little uh, experiment. So here, we have a database. I'm using Zeta um, for this database. Zeta, of course, being a serverless database um, where I used to work, but anyway. Um, and we have a database here in EU West 1. That is a cloud database in one specific region. If I click on this, um, I see you know, some speeds of various scooters, okay? And what I'm doing is I'm retrieving this data from different places to see kind of how it works. So what I'm doing is I'm retrieving the data from um, a cloud function, meaning you know, I'm making a request to like EU West, and then calling a database in EU West. So I'm calling a function in EU West, and then I'm calling a database from EU West, okay? Um, and then I'm, I'm also requesting this data from the edge. I don't want to compare. So if we model calling the database in EU West from a function in EU West, this is how it would look. So I'm in Australia. I'm going to make a request. That's the way the function lives. The function is going to call the database, and I'm going to get back data. Notice this, the speed of light is much less here right? So it's, the chances are the function is going to talk to the database rapidly, it's going to be good, especially if they're in the same data center, bonus points. So my function is hosted on Vercel in EU West as well. So database in EU West, function in EU West. And if we use speedvitals.com, measure this, what we can see is in EU West, we have like no latency in Frankfurt where the function and the database both are 150 milliseconds response. In different parts of Europe, it's a bit slower, but generally, closer you are, the better. If we go to America, things start to get slower with Iowa giving us 1.5 seconds of time to first bite. Um, if we go to Asia, you, can, you might as well forget about it. In fact, um, this is what it looks like on the map, and you can clearly see the closer you are to Europe, the better. Um, and if we look here on average, this, the average time to first bite worldwide is 630 milliseconds. 630 milliseconds, that is a bit too slow. Now. What does it look like if we query the same database in EU West from an edge function? To model that, let's go back to Excalibur. And instead of this thing here, what we'll do is, if I'm in Australia, I will talk to an edge function here in Australia. The edge function will go get data from my EU West database, come back and yield to me, okay? So in this case, my light speed distance to the edge function is short, but the edge function to the database is very long, okay? Um, how is that gonna play? Also, the edge functions prob is probably in a different data center and network than the database. Um, and as we can see here from, from Speed Vitals, it is worse. So this is, within Europe, it's pretty good. Um, sub 300 across the board, except here. Um, but as we go to America, look at this. It's all red, averaging over 600 milliseconds and from Asia Pacific and Australia over an entire second. This is this is not just milliseconds slow This is now seconds slow. It's a problem. People are not gonna give you money. Okay, and if we go down Look at this um, If you're close good, but if you're far like really really bad, it's not even orange It's just like red and if we come here 755 milliseconds um, Using edge functions it's worse than cloud functions and it's something to be aware of because it's bad now, how can we solve this? This is where I think the future of cloud and edge is. Data, cloud data is what we're using. I think the solution is edge data. So you make a request to an edge function that talks to a database also at the edge, therefore making everything um, closer to your users. Um, how, do you, how would you do that? Well, Cloudflare has workers at the edge. Cloudflare also has KV, um, a key value store at, at the edge, or D1, a distributed SQLite database at the edge. Um, and that's here, that's it's kind of, these are the documentation pages. They're pretty nice. The problem is you'd have to be deep in their ecosystem. Like you'd have to be in the Cloudflare network to get the full benefit. Um, but you could theoretically put like Redis at the edge to be used as like a localized data store for people at the edge. And this is kind of what Upstash is doing. So if you come here, um, Upstash, 
will give you Redis globally distributed at the edge close to your user. So now you have data at the edge with Upstash. Um, you have your function at the edge. You have your user also at the edge. This theoretically is faster. Keep in mind, this is not your primary database, but it's Redis at the edge. If you're not sure what Redis is, people use Redis usually as an in-memory cache um, in front of another database. So the user will ask your edge Redis for data. If it doesn't have it, it will take longer the first time just to populate Redis. But then everyone else who talks to your edge function and talks to your edge Redis is going to have a good time. Okay? Um, so I've used Upstash. I've set up a global scooter cache with a global region. And how it works is, here, let's just use Excalibur. So now, undo all of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to my edge function. My edge function is going to talk to Upstash also here in this region and be like, do you have the data? If no, then my edge function will be like, okay, I'm gonna get this once and then store it here, okay? And so next time I call it, my edge function, I'm gonna go to Upstash, do you have the data? Upstash be like, yeah, I got you. So this is all the distance my request travels and comes back. And by virtue of that, should see some speed. Let's check. So if we go here to speed vitals, um, Europe, mostly green, because London's edge function is requesting London's Upstash database. Uh, Frankfurt, same thing. It's not one region, it's global. Look, in the US, mostly green. Um, Oregon's edge function is requesting Oregon's Upstash database. Excellent. Asia and, and Africa is a bit slower, but not much. Look, here it's 498 milliseconds, and others, it's been, um, let's, che let's check others, 1.2 seconds, right? So, on the whole, faster. Um, still Tel Aviv's Upstash is talking to the nearest uh, edge function, etc. And it's still not as bad as it could be. In fact, if we look on the globe, wow, much better, more green. If we look here, 315 milliseconds from um, 630 with cloud compute, um, 755 with edge compute, and with edge data plus edge compute, 315 milliseconds. And I think 300 milliseconds or so is about the speed you blink. So yeah, edge compute, edge data, edge storage. I think this completes the picture. And this is why I'm really excited for Upstash and other edge data things in the space. But I want to explore a, a question. Is it worth it? Like we're talking about, you know, 700 milliseconds, 600 milliseconds, 300 milliseconds. Is the order, is a difference of about 300 milliseconds worth it? Is this just like a lot of hype for not a lot of value? Um, I'm not sure, especially because my experience setting up Upstash and creating this edge Redis was pretty frictionless. Um, and, I, and the pricing is also pretty reasonable. But above and beyond that, there's an excellent blog post. I'll put a link under the like button from web.dev. And it, it's titled Milliseconds Make Millions. And it's a study that reveals the significant impact of mobile speed site, site speed rather, on consumers' willingness to spend money and engage with brands um, that even a 0.1 second improvement in load times can improve progression rates across the full purchase funnel. TLDR, um, milliseconds make people love your thing and want to give you money. So I think especially because, you know, going from cloud um, cloud function uh, from, a, from a cloud database to edge function to cloud database, from edge to edge database, this journey for me wasn't hard. Um, I think it's well worth it for the to go from 700 milliseconds to 300. Um, and that's why I'm really excited about this next evolution of cloud and edge um, with data as well at the edge. But those are my thoughts. What do you think? Am I overhyping this? Am I just following the, the trend? Um, let me know. Leave me a comment or at me on Twitter. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.